What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode five of Our Killer Obsession with James and Crystal, your true crime connoisseurs. Welcome back. And if you're new here, thanks for joining us. And we hope you hit that subscribe button before you leave. Today's episode number five is the Ken and Barbie Killers. So let's go ahead and just jump right on into it. Yeah, we're going to talk about Carla Homoka and Paul Bernardo, a.k.a. the Ken and Barbie Killers or the Scarborough Rapist, as Paul was also known as. Um, he raped over 20 women, uh, three of whom they murdered together, and they videotaped themselves doing it. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. So let's start with how we start with all of our killers with their childhood and how it all began. Uh, Paul was born in 1964 to Ken and Marilyn Bernardo in Ontario, Canada. Uh, his father was also a creep. Oh, okay. So it kind of runs yeah, in the runs family in the on family, this one? Apparently. Okay. He was charged with peeping and pedophilia. Oh, wow. Yeah. Also a very abusive man, alcoholic, molested um, his daughters. Oh. Yeah. Mother was real depressed. Obviously, she's living with this horrible man and would leave a lot to her family's house and leave the kids home alone all the time um and during school paul became a pyromaniac and started burning things which Ooh. they say is one of the top three signs that you're going to be a serial killer really i, I did not know that yeah. I, I didn't know that was one of them i knew like um you know abuse and uh, things to animals and things like that yeah. is always like the leading three, top one. three wetting the bed oh, at an older really? age yeah uh killing animals and lighting fires wow okay yep okay paul was described as an abusive possessive boyfriend in his teen years he degraded his girlfriends in public treated them like absolute garbage um he enjoyed forceful sex Whoa. Mm -hmm, and dreamt of building a virgin farm oh hold on yeah. wow okay that's yeah okay. where he could breed virgin girls to rape oh my goodness yeah this guy that's something there that's so, wow mm-hmm Carla was born in 1970, so she's a little bit younger, to Carl and Dorothy Homoka. Her father was an alcoholic, abusive to his mother, um, described as a doting father, though, except when he was drunk. Oh, okay. Yeah, then he became very verbally abusive to the kids, mm. and Carla, it said that she would run and hide in the basement during these times. But she was a bright child, a good student, did really well in school until middle school. Mm. Then she became kind of depressed, started cutting, acting out for attention, um, fake suicide claims, mm. things like that. Okay. So she needed attention. Okay. Yeah. She wasn't getting. Yeah, doing a lot of crying out. Exactly. Wow. Um, it, Paul raped many women before he even met Carla. So he started his career early. Then... Um, Became dubbed by the police as a Scarsboro rapist, but it was before he was oh. caught. So they're looking for this mysterious Scarsboro okay. rapist All right. um, in British Columbia, Canada. Uh, they met in 1987. Paul was 23. Carla was 17. He had just finished college and they met in a hotel and she fell for him immediately. They actually hooked up the first night that they oh. were together and he was actually very angry that she wasn't a virgin when they were together. Okay, that's, I mean... Yeah, he's, right. he's got an obsession here. Right, because <laughs> that's something, like, I guess most people really worry about, right? Yeah, no. right. No, it's it's his thing. Um, yeah. So he started, slowly started controlling her, typical controlling possessive boyfriend, controlled what she wore, um, who she talked to, what she did, wanted to control everything about her life, what she ate. He was always calling her ugly and fat. Mm. And when you see her, they call them the Ken and Barbie killers for a reason. They are attractive people. Okay. Um, she wanted to be such a good, obedient girlfriend for Paul that she made a self-improvement list. And it said, be a perfect girlfriend for Paul. Remember, you're ugly. Remember, you're fat. Oh, my She goodness. was none of the above, though. She was not. Wow. Yeah. Um, Carla submitted to him very quickly because she wanted to be this perfect girlfriend and encouraged his deviant sexual behavior. Mm. In 1988, uh, the rapes continued with Carla's knowledge and participation. It oh said that goodness. she, one of the witnesses said that she was there with a video camera. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> during. Wow. Some of the victims came forward and gave like a composite sketch and ex-girlfriends seen the sketch on TV and went to police with all these, you know, stories about him being this horrible abuser and rapist. Mm, mm. And he was questioned in 1988 and DNA was actually taken from him. Okay. But it was never tested uh, for two years. Okay. Well, that's yeah, kind of what's 
They just held on to it for two years. All right. Well, let's take this now so that way we can look into you and then not look into you for two years. For two years. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Talk about dropping the ball. Yeah. They just let it go. Jeez. In 1990, Paul became obsessed with Carla's youngest, younger sister, Tammy. She was 15 at the time. He would watch her. He stalked her. He became obsessed with her. Um, he planned to rape her with Carla's help. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. So during the summer, uh, they with had a the sister's help. Car- like, his oh girlfriend. My yeah. How- can you imagine telling your girlfriend, like, by the way, um, obsessed with your sister? Right. And who stays with somebody like that? Wow. Oh, it gets worse. Wow. Oh, yeah. So during a summer family trip, um, Carla spiked Tammy's drink with Valium. So she worked at a veterinary clinic where she had access to medications for animals. Okay. And a lot of them are similar to what people use. Okay. So, yeah. So she spiked her drink with Valium, which oh, she goodness. stole from her vet clinic right, job. Gotcha. But this time it didn't work out because Tammy woke up. Okay. And so they didn't get to do they didn't get to do their plan. Oh. <laughs> so they waited until December. <clears throat> so December 23rd, after a Christmas dinner with her family, she wanted to gift Tammy's virginity to Paul as a Christmas present. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow. So she spiked Tammy's drink with sleeping pills. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. And this is all after Christmas dinner with the family. And oh, then they're oh in the basement gosh. with her sister. So while Paul raped Tammy, Carla held a rag soaked with some kind of anesthetic that she stole from her job over okay. her face. Okay. Um, by the time they were finished, though, Tammy was dead. Oh, no. They did try to revive her okay. um, to no avail. So they cleaned her up, put her back in her bed and called 911. Um, even though she had chemical burns all over her face from the rag that Carla had held to her face, they deemed it an accident. Oh, like an accidental wow. overdose. Okay. Um, and they were never looked into. We've seen pictures. I don't know if I'll put them in here or not, yeah. but, um, I, I've seen the pictures. You can Google them. It is terrible. Yeah. I mean, there's no serious, way. Serious, serious chemical burns. You can be like that, that accidentally got there. I mean, there has to be some explanation on how this damage got done to this poor girl's face and to deem it an accident is just mind blowing. Right. And it's her sister. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Gosh. So, well, obviously too, though, the first one, um, sounds like it was an accident, like legitly, the like they didn't plan on murdering her. They just planned on knocking her out and, and ha- having then, their way with and her, and then waking her up and going about their yeah. Their you'll life. see they they do this successfully with other women. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then they don't remember things later because of the medication. Wow, but okay. yeah, her sister died. Right. Wow. Oof. Yeah. So, the couple at the funeral. Put a photo of themselves in her casket oh, with her no. before she was buried. Eesh. Yeah. And then later they wanted to reenact all the the fun they had apparently with Tammy and her. So Carla would wear her sister's clothes oh. and they would videotape themselves pretending she would pretend to be Tammy oh, man. while they were together. That is weird and disgusting. It is. <laughs> oh, man. So June 7th, 1991. Carla had a teenage co-worker that she invited over for drinks and she laced her drink with Halcyon. It's another uh, heavy sedative used for people okay. back in the day and animals. Okay. Um, she wanted it to be a surprise wedding gift for Paul. Wow. Yeah. These are some gifts that she wants to give. Yeah. Like she wow, really wanted insane. to be the ultimate submissive wow. slave to this guy. Now, are they just like a couple or are they married? At this right point? now they're a couple. Okay. They're getting ready to get married. Oh my goodness. Yeah. They actually get married like a week after this. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So she gifts this girl, this drunk girl that she drugged up to Paul oh. and they filmed themselves raping her. And then, but she woke up the next day with no recollection and survived. Oh, okay. Yeah, so right. she didn't die. And wow. they actually do this to the same girl multiple times. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and they, they call her Jane Doe, like in the court proceedings and everything. Okay. Her name never really comes out. Okay. But I don't think she actually knew what happened until all of this came out. Oh, later. and then kind of put two and two together, and right. then she's like, "Just leave my name out of this. Exactly. And leave me as Jane Doe because I don't want nothing to do with this." Right. Wow. So June fifteenth, nineteen ninety one. Uh, Paul found this. So this is like a week later. He found 15 year old Leslie Mahaffey. So this girl was out hanging out with her friends and was out past curfew. So her parents locked her out. Oh. You know, punishment. You're late. Wow. You're sleeping outside oh, tonight. No, exactly. Oh no. Yeah. So she's standing outside and he sees his next victim and he offers her a ride or whatever. And she says, well, you got a cigarette? And he says, yeah. 
So she gets in the car with him to smoke a cigarette and he pulls a knife on her mm. and he blindfolds mm-hmm. her and then takes her home. Wow. He wakes up Carla and tells her, hey, we got a new playmate. No, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And they videoed themselves also raping her. Oh, my God. But um, the blindfold came off. Oh, okay. And she could see who they were. Okay. So they ended up killing her. Wow. But there's and, some... And- I heard that was like a big thing um, maybe during the tapes when it all came out is that they kept saying something about making sure the blindfold stayed on as yeah. if they wanted yeah, to you keep have their to identity. Remember, there uh, are videotapes of all of these things. Right. So in court, when they were played, they can see exactly how it went down. Right. Well, I think they play yeah. or I think they played. Is this the one they played just the audio? I think so. I think so, they just yeah. played the audio because there's like, we don't want you to see any of this. Hearing it is bad enough. Right. Um, but yeah, so they, they obviously planned on trying to do the same thing like they did with Jane Doe and um, keeping their identity secret and yeah. doing your thing and then letting and her then go. And then you can hear them panicking about the blindfold. And, and yeah. But the murder itself is not on video. And so there's some discrepancy on what actually happened. Okay. Carla says Paul strangled her. But Paul says Carla beat her with a rubber mallet while he went to get something to eat. Wow. Okay. I mean, those are two different, like... Way different. So was it, like, was it all done? And and so it's hard to tell which one's telling you the truth or, you know, like... We'll get to that. Okay. (laughs) So... They left this poor dead girl in the basement, and they went to dinner with Carla's family. Oh, my goodness. They're just like, take a break. Time out. We're going to go to dinner. Wow. Hungry. Yeah. Right. Then they come back. They dismember her. They cut her, Carla says, into 10 pieces because she remembers 10 concrete blocks that they put her in. Oh, my goodness. Yep. And they threw her in Lake Gibson. Wow. Yeah. So June 29th, 1991. This is all the same month. Of the same year. Holy okay? cow. They get married. <laughs> right? Okay. All right. No longer boyfriend and girlfriend. Nope. Now let's take this up a notch, baby. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Getting married. How crazy. That same day, Mahaffey's remains were found in the lake. Oh, the same my day. goodness. Wow. Mm-hmm. So then it takes us to a year later, uh, almost a year later, April 16th, 1992. Uh, they kidnapped 15-year-old Kristen French together as she left school. Um, they made her drink a ton of alcohol, got her wasted, drugged her up, and made her watch a video of them raping Mahaffey. Oh, my goodness. Like, this is what's to come for you oh, type no, of thing. that's terrifying. Yeah, and they wanted her to be really submissive to Paul and be like a sex slave type of person, mm. but she fought back. She called him a bastard, mm. and she said, I don't know how your wife can stand to be around right. you. Well, good for so her. She was, yeah, <laughs> spicy little tamale, but... He, he wasn't having it, and he ended up beating her to death and strangling oh, her. That's terrible. Well, at least she got her two cents in. You know, yep. At least let him know what you really think. She wasn't going to give in. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. So they washed her body mm. after, cut her hair off, mm. and then dumped her in a ditch near the cemetery where Mahaffey is buried. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Wow. So then December 27th, 1992, Paul beat Carla with a flashlight. He gave her two black eyes, a couple broken ribs. Oh. She tried to play it off like it was an accident, went to work. And they were like, BS, girl, you mm. got beat up. Wow, well, yeah. So the, her, you, yeah, the, you have seen the pictures. Oh, like, yeah. There's no There's accident. no accident. Like, yeah, it's yeah. pretty bad. Um, her co-workers called it out, and they're like, bull crap. And they called her mom. And so her mom took her to the hospital where she claimed battered woman syndrome, you know. Right, and right. Okay. she's being brainwashed okay. by this guy. I mean, you know, which, hey... It could be possible, but mm-hmm. I, I don't know. It sounded pretty willing. I mean, holy yeah. cow, it's yeah, been a she, while, and then you're going to go and marry the person and everything. Yeah, and like, keep going and gift him these women and yeah, your own sister. Right, yeah. And then after your yeah. own sister dies, you just keep amping it up and keep yeah. going. Wow. Yeah, it didn't scare you enough to stop and get away from the guy? Right, brainwashed. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah. So she claimed a battered spouse, mm. filed charges against Paul. For mm. domestic violence. Okay. And just happened to be the same time that DNA test they took oh. two years ago oh. was finally being tested. Oh, okay. And so it came back as a positive match for the Scarsboro rapist. So then, now they know Paul's the rapist. If only we would have done this two years ago. Right. We could have saved could've... these girls. I mean, come on, you guys. And Holy Carla, cow. really. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, I mean, yeah, for sure. Who knows what she would have done. But I mean, if you stopped it, if you if like they say, you cut the head off the snake. Exactly. You know, so. Ooh. Yeah. 
so Carla ended up going to live with her aunt and uncle for a while, you know, while all this was going on. And she admitted to them that Paul was the Scarsborough rapist and mm. that he had murdered Mahaffey in French. Mm. She didn't say anything about her sister, though. Oh, OK. Of course which, not. Which is, um, yeah. yeah. You don't want to admit Gosh. to your family that you basically gave her to him. That's, that's you know? true. That's true. So she mm. sought immunity for from prosecution for cooperation. So she didn't wow. want to be prosecuted at all. She said, I will give you all this information, but I want to be free. Wow. Yeah. No. They're like, <laughs> and, okay. And then there's a ton of tapes that go with it. You know exactly what kind of role she played in it. Yeah. They said, absolutely not. You're not getting out of this completely scot-free. Yeesh. They offered her 12 years for manslaughter. Wow. So it's either you take the manslaughter in 12 years or we're charging you with three murders because now they're like, what really happened to your sister? Right. Then they did dug her up to do another autopsy. And that's when they found the photo of Carla and Paul in the casket. They didn't even know. Yeah. They found it after. Oh, that's gross and creepy. Yeah. Right. Wow. And especially as everything's getting put together and tied together now and you're really finding out who these people are. Ugh. Right. So she took the deal. Obviously. 12 years, though. That's it for those three girls. But she took the deal. She did testify against Paul. Mm. Uh, September 1st, 1995, Paul was convicted to life without parole. Um, He's considered what a danger. It's like a Canadian thing, like a danger to society type of situation. Mm. So he'll never be offered parole. Right. Yeah. It's like you can get a life sentence, but if they deem you, um, maybe I'll figure it out and throw it up in here, whatever the right term or whatever. But if they deem you like a yeah, it's like dangerous. Uh, danger to society. Yeah. Then basically they're like, you get life and you're a danger. Forget about getting out. Exactly. And he had to be kept in segregation for a long time. People were threatening him. And at one point um, early on, there was like um, a riot and they were trying to get him. So wow. they had to like move him. Good, good. I mean, I don't know how it is there. Maybe it sounds like maybe it might be similar. But um, if you don't know about our prison systems here in America, um, they have their own justice system yeah, in they there, have their own, and, like, and the prisoners do not like when you hurt women and children. No. And uh, they'll they'll take it into their in, in their own hands and serve you their justice. You know what I'm saying? So it sounds like it might be the Similar. same way they. Which some people may be like, "Hey, you get what you deserve," and some people may be like, "That's not that's not justice." So I'm mean, whatever. I don't know what you what you think, but right. Well, hey, let us know. Yeah, what's let your us know. opinion well, what on that? What do you think? Is that like one of them? You get what you deserve. Things. Who cares? So uh, save some tax dollars type situation, or is that like, you, you know, everybody's entitled to their rights no matter what you did? And there it is. I don't know. It's tough, ain't it? It is tough because it was my family. I think I would want him to be. I mean, that's what you kind of always got to do kind of always got to do to put yourself in in their shoes and be like, if I was or if, you know, my family, like, what would I want? And be hard not to be very angry. Exactly. Yeah. If it was my daughter or my Mm. sister, 100 percent death penalty. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Mm. So the deal with Carla, though, was highly criticized by the media and the public. They were like, what the heck? You're making a deal with the devil here. Yeah. Because they also heard what was on the tapes and how much she was involved. Yeah, which I I heard uh, she kind of got the deal um, before. They really seed all the tapes. Everything was really out. So then they're kind of like, well, we kind of have what we have from her. So we're not going to go back. Yeah, the deal's already made, even though she's on the tape, like, fully. Yeah, she's cooperating with us, basically, and we're good. (sighs) Oof, Man. That's tough. Yeah, so they were very angry about it. They Everybody thought she should have never been offered that deal. She should be life in prison as well, especially for her sister. Although yeah. they were never actually charged with her sister's murder. Gotcha. It came up. Still... And, yep. And they were talking about it recently, about opening it back up and charging her. And they said they're not going to right yeah, now. Which is wild. Which is wild. Because especially within the light of everything that's come up. Uh, wow. Right. Mm. So Paul is in prison for the rest of his life. But Carla was released in 2005. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not even that's the wild. full 12 years, is that's it? That's wild. Right. So she ran to the Caribbean island of Guadalupe, married her lawyer's brother. Mm, 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 mm. He, this woman, you know, was convicted killed of this stuff and you're going to be like, slaughter. Hey, so you, you know, believe Go ahead, bro. Yeah, right. Bel- <laughs> they must believe what she said. Well, you know, though, they say like pretty women don't really get convicted a lot of things you hear about those teachers on the news all the time if they're pretty they don't usually get in trouble i mean they say that stuff matters that's why they dress you up a certain way when you walk into that courtroom you don't walk in there normally like you do out on the streets right it all matters so they got married and had three kids 
She's out just living a normal Wild. life, and Wild. now she's back in Canada. Wild. Yeah, I heard that she was going to stay there, but she was going to move to a different part because I guess the language barrier is just enough. Oh, Quebec. Um, Okay, yeah. yeah. She's going to go to Quebec, Quebec because, because the, they're more French. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that little bit of language barrier and the news medias and stuff and how it worked out. They wouldn't have gotten out, so much publicity And there. she wouldn't be so recognized there. So I, I heard she was going to try to live out her life there. Lucky her, right? <laughs> right. Living Goodness. out her life, but not her sister. Ooh, wow. Or those other two women. Yeah. How do you how do you just go about life and, and know what the hell happened to your sister forever? Yeah, I heard she did write an apology to her family, too, about her sister. But I can't imagine they have any kind of relationship now. Yeah. Yeah, that's wild. It man. is wild. That's insane. Ah, do you do you believe the whole brainwashed mm. thing? You know, battered spouse, which I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna say is not no. possible and doesn't happen. Women do get brainwashed all the time. It, it Stay happens. with these guys that do the most horrendous things. It happens. But she seems like such a big player in part of it. You know, right? And it sounds like she was more than willing. Um, it don't sound like she appeared to be very battered no. or anything and, during the process and not of remorseful of about her sister at all right you know I, I would almost think like yeah that would be a part of the batteredness or the brainwashedness when you finally get to come out of that and free yourself you would be like this is what happened i yeah. need this weight off my shoulders right um but instead you're you took it with you for a long time and, and didn't even say nothing about it. that's oof. the worst part i feel like is just she's just living normal life now that is and uh, it's really not that long ago it feels like the 90s wasn't that long ago i know it was yeah but but time flies and not really to have murdered someone like in 97 more than one someone 95 you know and now you're free yeah that was fast that was very fast yeah very fast and how do you just i don't know man how do you just move on I right, just, just start... move on with that. Right. And like you don't forget that, right? Of everything you've done and been through and seen and you don't forget that. How do you just move on with life? Right. Wow. And how is she not a predator? How is she not considered a predator? Yeah. Yeah. And, and have... Now I did hear though that there's a lot of stipulations on her her release too, though, that there was like um they wanted they wanted to push for like complete like leave her alone, you don't know where she is type thing, but they were like, No, not happening because of the offenses that she's okay. created and done. So she still um, has a kind of like so there's where still, she's at. I think there's like um, a list of like nine or 10 um, things that she has to comply with. Mm. And it's kind of like they, they got to know where she's at and what she's doing. And there's a time frame of where she's allowed to go places and okay. let so them know. Okay. So there's still kind of stipulations. So on there's her still release. stuff on her. They know where she's at and they're watching her, but you, she gets to live her life. That's just wild. That's terrible. All right, that's going to do it for episode five of Our Killer Obsession with James and Crystal. And we hope you enjoyed um, our story tonight. And we hope you like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you don't miss our next episode. Definitely. See you next week.